Our next speaker was recently named She's Mercedes Businesswoman by Mercedes-Benz among women such as Sheryl Sandberg, COO of Facebook. Uh, she's also the founder of TLA Black Women in Tech, uh, and she was chosen by the BBC as their brand strategy expert. And in fact, I have caught her on the BBC a couple times now and I feel like Elf because I start screaming, I know her, I know her. Uh, super cool, she's unbelievable. I am one of her biggest fans. Uh, and she's also a founder of a creative agency called Three Colors Rule. So please join me in welcoming this international keynote superstar, Lavilla Fonging. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching, listening to my talk Beyond Marketing. I am super excited about what I'm going to share during this session with me. I'm obviously, I'm sorry I can't be here in Seattle with you, but it's okay. We're going to get the best, do the best of what we have. It's going to be still very interactive. I'm going to spend some time chatting in the, chatting in the chat box. <laughs> so get connected, stay connected, talk as much as you want, and I'm going to be there and try to give you as much amazing content as we can possibly get in a 30-minute session. All right, develop an effective brand ecosystem to increase client loyalty and lifetime client value. I think there's nothing more important, especially in the day and age we are right now, we are all separated, but obviously we stay connected. We need to be able to bring something to our clients that will make them stay with us. And I think more than ever right now, you know, COVID-19 has created a situation that helps us think about how we can do things differently. So it is very relevant. So I've put for you three objectives that I want to achieve by the end of the session. The first one is create a following of faithful individuals who buy from you frequently. If you have that in place, it means that you don't have to spend a lot of time on marketing acquisition. You can just focus on building a very great relationship with your customers. And I think that's extremely important. Objective number two is visit to use the Beyond Marketing, which I'm going to share with you. I'm so excited about that activity to create the most engaging engage, the most engagement. Yes. So this is something that I've decided, I realized that I was doing and my clients were doing as well. And I want to share with you the methodology in terms of how to do Beyond Marketing because being like, what's, what is Beyond Marketing? We're going to be talking about that. And the last objective is create a brand ecosystem that increases your client lifetime value. Again, I talk a lot about lifetime value because as we experience the recession that we are entering or we are already in, means that we have to find ways to get people to buy from us no matter what is happening, okay? Are you excited? Please write in the chat box if you're excited because I am. Tell me, tell me everything. All right, so if you've watched you know, some of my previous talk, I love to talk about the DSC system. This is a system that I've created to really help my clients understand how they can create a brand from, the, create the right foundation for a brand. And it's very simple. D stands for distinguish, A stands for attract, and C stands for convert and convert. And we'll see, we do that through a lot of psychology and understanding you know, the, the consumer behavior, but I can explain how you can do it really for yourself. If you are you know, in a new business or even if you are evaluating what your business is to be, you need to start with your brand strategy. Really, what makes you remarkable? What makes you people choose to buy from you? What is the value that you're bringing? When you have that, you can really find a way to really align the way you talk about, the way you find the position for your business with the way you present it. Because if you do the, the identity before the strategy, then you're doing the wrong order. And obviously, the marketing, the sales, and the digital activities are really the way for you to, the ways for you to bring customers towards you. But quite often, what I see is that people forget to do one or the other, and they wonder, well, I have a great brand, I have a great identity, but clients are not coming to me. Have you done any marketing? Have you done any sales? Have you done any digital activities? No, you need to do something about it. Or sometimes you have lots of leads, but you see people don't convert. So it means there's something wrong either with your strategy or something wrong with your identity. So really make sure that you do them in the right order. I wanted to give you the basics of what really help will help you get a brand that really makes a big difference and really stay for as long as you want to be. To be. Okay. So let's get started. This is something that I've shared a number of times as well, and I love to explain really the journey of the brand of the customers. It has evolved over the, you know, the decades and the years. So I wanted to get an example that everybody can be, you know, relate. Everybody knows Nike, and Nike has always been very forward when it comes to brand evolution and what they've done. But they've also made some mistakes, and I'm going to show you that. 
The first one, you know, when we started, you know, getting to looking at the marketing and how advertising was done, it was very much about the price, really, very much focused in terms of how, how to use the product. Because we're talking about products that were very new in the market. People wanted to understand why do I need to pair, wear a pair of trainers? What does it mean? From that point, if you look at the 70s and the 90s, people wanted choices. If you think about the first era of when people were buying their first car, everybody had exactly the same car. Now everybody wanted their own personalization. That's really the era that really defined what people wanted to wear. But also people didn't want to have one of one thing, like you know what, you have one dress. You really wanted to have more than one dress, dresses. And that's the same thing that Nike has applied to really showcase that no matter what are your activities you have, we have a trainer, trainer for you, trainers for you. What do you think happened? This is probably an error that really changes everything. Right in the box, what do you think happened? Tell me. I want to know. Okay, let me reveal. This is the era where brand mold kicks in because now, especially if you think about now, everything becomes quickly public. If you do something wrong, people will call you on the nonsense and you can't not ignore that. That's how you damage your brand. And obviously people didn't want to wear trainers from kids who were made you know, in poor countries. They didn't want that. So they had to change and be very, a bit more transparency. I would say complete transparency, let's be honest, but be more transparency in terms of how things were done. And that was super, extremely important. So what followed is really, if you heard, tell me if you heard about Simon Sinek, who talks a lot about the magic of what starts with your why, so magic of starting why, I rephrase the sentence, but you get the point. It was very much about positioning. Why are you doing it? You know, so it was, if you look at the advertising campaign of Nike, you didn't even present the product. It was very much about pushing for greatness, you know, finding your greatness, being the person that people want to be around and being, you know, pushing yourself and the athlete within you. And that's really where they were. Now we are in the last phase of how brands communicate with their audience. Can somebody tell me, I'll write it in the box, where do you think we are right now? Have a guess. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Have a guess. Well, to be honest, you know it already. You know, we're literally living into it. We are extremely connected more than ever. If you look at how people interact, you know, we couldn't even imagine not being online. I spend my time on Instagram, I spend my time on LinkedIn. I've connected with amazing people on Twitter. That also only happened for the power of social media. So, so you have to look at how you are actually communicating and how you are behaving around your customer. So if you transform your audience as a community, they become your brand advocates. And that's really the goal that you want to have. You want to have people who have the same goals, the same, the same niche, or even if it, you, know, you create sub-niches, if you have different audiences, but then get them to connect with one another. And that way they will never want to leave. And that's what Nike has done for a number of, you know, if they apps and also the things that personal trainers, get people to run, you know, people share their runs and so forth. There's a lot of things that are happening. So that's what I wanted to share with you, really just like the, the foundation of what we're going to be talking about, but really getting to get, understand that. So go beyond the expected. That's the first thing I would tell you. And I love that. Go beyond the expected. And I'm going to show you as well how you can do it and how companies have done it even during, how companies have done it even during COVID-19. Go beyond to support their ultimate goals. That's really the secret of beyond marketing. And I'm going to show you really how you can get to think like that. All right, just so you know, what I'm sharing with you, it's a bit of a preview in terms of my book that I'm writing, okay, step by step, I'm getting there, but you're going to love it. I'm excited. I keep saying I'm super excited. So by providing something better and convenient, make you remarkable. I keep putting myself because it's so important. People really sometimes go over the surface and really don't understand the importance of really understanding what makes you remarkable. I remember listening this morning, actually, to one of the small talk, two-minute talk from Seth Goldin, and he talks about his company who does you know, unmatchable, you know, unmatched socks. And they make about 12 million turnover because they really understood exactly it wasn't about the socks anymore. It was about the little girls who wanted to have something to say and want to be different. And that's really what you need to understand. But I'm going to show you more in details of what I mean by that. So let's get into the subject. Are you ready? Yes? You ready? Okay, because I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm ready again. So what is the correlation between this hairdresser and this group of people who seems to be having a great time of the time of their life. I wish I was so busy, but not expecting social distancing whatsoever. And they are drinking on this beautiful place around the beach. I'm presuming somewhere in Miami or maybe somewhere in Spain, in Barcelona. What is the correlation between those two photos? Can somebody guess and tell me what does a hairdresser have to do with this group of people on the other side? What do you think? What do you think it is? 
No? Okay, that's okay. If somebody give me an answer, I'm not going to say anyway. I'm going to leave until the end. Okay, let's get into this a small self brand audited by this hairdresser. So the first question I want you to ask yourself is, what services can you get at a hair salon? I think it's pretty simple. <laughs> if you come to the hair salon not to look, have a better you know, hairstyle, there's something wrong. So really, wash, pretty standard, right? wash, treatment, cut, and styling. That's when you come to the hairdresser. You don't come, you also come for the chatting and, you know, uh, you know, gossiping or whatever it's in you. <laughs> I know that when I go to the hairdressers, it's a day because we have so much to say every day, but people are like, how do you spend an hour all day in the salon? That's me. But again, that's a different experience. You don't have to do us like me. Second question is, what outcomes do your customers expect? You really think about if you were a hairdresser, what outcomes do your customer expect? So what does it come out with a great hairstyle? You know, come out with a great hairstyle, you come out looking rough, especially after COVID-19. <laughs> And when you come out looking amazing afterwards, you want to be like refresh. It's brand new me. Welcome you normal. I can take everything that I can. I can. Yes, you can. And I'm sure you can, no matter what. Question number three is, what is a common customer journey? So look back, if you are if you're running a hair salon, what it will look like? So I guess if we talked about, remember what we talked about, you by that point, you have a great brand. So you would have, you would have been doing some marketing, you'd be doing some advertisement, all sort of things to get people into the store, right? Then obviously when they come in, you, may, you know, they need to book or walk in. One of these, come to the salon and obviously get the head on. That's a really typical, you know, customer journey to, from hearing about your brand to actually sitting on your chair and doing something. The next question is, what are the issues her customers may be dealing with? What are the issues her customer may be dealing with? Just try to think about from their point of view, like they want to get hairstyle, something is happening, we forget COVID-19, that's another, another matter, but I'm going to give you a couple of them to give you a sense of what it's about. So it could be a lack of time. Sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't have time to, to go to the salon and I really need a hair, you know, a hair appointment. Sometimes it could be budgets, like I really love this, you know, this hairdresser, but every time she costs me 200 pounds or 300 dollars, God knows how much, you know? So you're thinking like, you know, I'm going to say, especially now, COVID-19, you know, I'm probably going to let my root go a bit white and wait a bit later, yes? Could be the fact that your preferred hairstylist is always unavailable, it's always busy, so you have to wait for a long time. So really, it's good to, you know, a lot of people don't enough do uh, get themselves into the shoes of their customers and then you learn so much by not, I will also never make assumptions, but I say like, if you have a conversation with your customers and say, like, oh, I haven't seen you in a long time, what happened? And when you get to know that, oh, okay, when you start seeing some new information that will help you find new solutions for your customers so you can better serve them, be remarkable. Obviously, no follow-up assistance. You know, a number of times, and I keep saying to my head, just like, tell me next time I need to come because I usually, you always tell me I come too late. But if she didn't have something in place, you know, tell me like, hey, your next appointment is due. It's time now to book your time. Probably more likely to come often. So really, I want you to list a couple of examples of what would be the issue, issues why your customer is not coming as often or as regularly or stop coming, even worse. Question number five. How can she deliver her service product differently? I think it's really hard when you have low differentiation for a commodity kind of base service, especially when it comes to hairstyling, and there's always a way to become a brand. But a lot of people really don't understand the power of having a business and the power of having a brand. Obviously, when you when you're a brand, you're Starbucks. When you're a business, you're a coffee shop. That gives the power to charge more for that. So which one do you want to be? I always ask people, which one do you want to be? Everybody wants to be Starbucks, yes? But for that, you need to ask yourself, how exactly are you doing things differently? In that case, she can have a booking appointment. She booking an app, should I say, a pampering experience. So, you know, how often you come to the salon, you can get champagne, you can get manicure, even a massage. You know, you can get all these things obviously charge for if you want to. Obviously, you can, if you want to have, offer your people, a, you know, a glass of champagne, that's, you know, obviously something that you can give as extra or no charge. But, you know, obviously the things, you know, it's like, you know, I always look at business as personal relationship. You know, the reason why you fall in love with someone, it's not for the big things. So the little things that they do on a regular that makes you want to, you know, stay with them. And the same thing, you know, if you look at the relationship with the brand, it's exactly the same story. Six, what can she do to resolve customers' issues? Mm, again, we're talking about mobile hairstyles. You can do that. You don't have time to come to me. I'll come to you. Or again, something like home hairstyling kit with video tutorials. You can't afford to have me. I'll create a kit for you. Just deliver to your house. And then you watch a video to do it yourself. Ah, pretty good. Service reminder. And I think, you know, the second option would have to be perfect during COVID-19. If I was a hairdresser, that's what I would be doing. I would be biking on that. So service reminder. That's some of the examples that you can really look at listening to your issues from your customers and find a solution. 
Question seven, what experience may she want to create in the mind of her customers? How, what is experience? Remember, we talk about experience a lot when it comes to branding. You know, you can be a coffee shop or you can be Starbucks. If you can have experience of getting to a Starbucks, exactly the same no matter where you go to. Yes, they're very clear on that. In her case, it can be the Hollywood experience at home or at, you know, at the salon. No matter where you go, you still get that same Hollywood experience. Question number eight, how can she create this experience? Obviously, she can hire the best hairstylist or this celebrity stylist, video tutorials, if you can obviously pay them every day, luxury salon design and pampering. So this is really what transport people. You know, some, again, as I say, what you do, people expect you to do it well, but everything around it, that's what really creates reason why I say, well, you know, I understand why I'm paying dollars to go to this hairstylist. She's amazing. And I'm feeling, I feel like a princess when I come out. I don't want to do this, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it. Okay, so this is the assumption people make. Yes, when it comes to marketing, you think, okay, this is where I need to stop. But when you think about beyond marketing, we go a bit further. Let me tell you why. Your clients don't choose to continue buying from you because you meet their expectation. I'm going to read that again because it's super important. Your clients don't choose to continue buying from you because you meet their expectation but because you exceed those expectations. Remember what I told you when you're in a relationship and this person is great with you and the reason why you fell in love with that person was for the little things that they've done that you did not expect from them. It's the same thing for business. I always compare, I always compare love and business, obviously by the sex, we know that, but you know, except from that, it's the same thing. It's a bad relationship at the end of the day, yes? So everybody recognize this man? Who is this man? If you've never been to any fashion show, if you've never even watched a fashion show, go back online and look for Carl Lagerfeld because his shows were always phenomenal. And the reason why it was always phenomenal, and that's what he always say, we must always surprise. This is the rule. So when you came to the Carl Lagerfeld show, you didn't even come from a collection, you came from the entire experience. Even the models were having so much fun. The, the idea of being able to cut work for Carl Lagerfeld was something that you wanted to tick on your box. Yes. So really think about how you always surprising your customer and take them beyond just what they expect from you. All right. Let's move to the next slide. So keep them interested. Yes. Keep adding value. Always focus on adding value. Always, always, always adding value. They be loyal and become your brand advocates. This is exactly the match. People say to me, like, oh, Fabula, you get recommended for so many things at the time. It's because I really spend a lot of time having this relationship with my customers. I want them to win because when they win, first, I can brag about it. <laughs> and first, I can actually say that what I'm doing works. You know, it's not just about business because when they win and I know that they're trying to achieve something amazing for other people, it's important that we get this across. And that's really what makes a difference. And I really wanted to articulate that as much as I can. Really focus on listening. And again, people say, oh my gosh, I have thousands and millions of customers. Again, you can do it on a smaller or bigger, bigger scale. Just having this conversation, you know, you know, delegate and how you want to do it on a different level, you know, whatever it is, supporting and for the community. For the, you listen, you can see people comment and people tell you. You also have to listen to the negative feedback because that really feeds you and helps you understand, ah, oh, that's something we can improve, but as well as the positive feedback, you know? All right. So go beyond the expected. I will pick this again and go beyond the go beyond to support the ultimate goals. Okay, so I'm going to take you to the next step. This is a question. So remember this question, what benefits do her customers expect from her? What benefits do her customers expect from her? So obviously, they come to a salon to live with a great hairstyle. If they came to look like a witch, unless it was Halloween, <laughs> then there would be a certain issue here. So this is what I want to ask you. Is this enough to keep them buying from her? Please tell me in the box. Is this enough? to keep them buying from her. What do you think? This is enough. Okay, let's ask the next question. This is my beyond question, go beyond marketing question. What are the ultimate goals of her clients? Remember that people, when people come to the salon, they actually don't come for a hairstyle. You may think, what do we come for then? <laughs> Really think beyond that, that's really why the magic word is, what is really the reason why they come? You know, when you come, you can, make, can give you a lot of examples. If you go to a restaurant, if you go to a certain type of restaurant, you don't come for food, you come for something else. So let me give you some example. To be respected. So when I look great, when my hairstyle is great and I look dressed, I have a certain people treat me in a certain way. Could be a reason. Be attractive. I'm single, I'm ready to mingle. <laughs> So therefore, you know, I have powerful hair, 
you know, for a man or vice versa or whatever, you know, it could be a way. Yes. It could be fit a group. Keep your friends like, you know, I want to be part of a certain society and I want people to feel that I, I should be, you know, I could be invited to certain places. So therefore, this is the way to look I want to portray. We all want to belong to something. Yes. We, this is why social media is so powerful is because we are, we feel that in this necessity as humankind, you know, it's, and a lot of people struggle during COVID-19 because of that. I think we have a desire to stay connected. Thank God for technology. Thank God for Zoom. <laughs> Thank God for social media, for all the platforms that allows us to stay connected. And I can't imagine even me, you know, not having my team around, you know, I need this. I need to feel that I'm being part of something. And like her who come to the hair salon, you can see that she actually, her ultimate goal is to feed a group feed a group and that's why the magic is when you understand what you why your clients come to you specifically what is the ultimate goes beyond just the work that you do you know everything that we do is part of the bigger picture you know i stay healthy i want to do this i, I, I choose instead of drinking milk i drink soya milk this is not just about the milk you know there's a bigger picture behind that it can be i want to live until 100 years <laughs> Okay, that seems a bit long, but to be honest, back in the days, people used to live that, that far away. But it could be, this is the ultimate goal. That's why you need to be able to grab and really find a way to really align your activities, your beyond marketing activities to what they're trying to want, what they really want. So do you remember at the beginning when I asked you, what is the correlation between the hairdresser and this beautiful photo of this? This is what it was about. The idea that this young girl, she, she's like millennial, she's cool, she wants, she knows when she comes to this hairdresser, she's going to have access to this private event on a boat, which has happened every year. It's part of a journey. And you create that, you know, that tribe, that group people want to be part of. This is really what it's about. You know, they want to feel like they're part of something. So we see it's, it's, it wasn't even about the hair anymore. It was about something else. So really think about how Nike has always been advertising. They, when you look at the Nike campaign, do they actually show you trainers? They barely even show you trainers. They have this phase when they understand that when we have a vision and that vision aligns with our customers, with their ultimate goals, we can go beyond that. We can provide something. We can create a, we can create a group of people that will be faithful to us no matter what. I hope I'm giving you some great value information that you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going to think everything. And I really want you to feel like excited by that because there's so much that you can learn. Business is like love. Don't move too fast, but don't move too slow. Yes. So really find a way as well when you, you know, when you have this at the attention of your customer, when they're starting to fall in love with you, how are you maintaining? You know, we have a short attention span. That's one thing, nothing we can do about it. You know, even if you think about, you know, relationship, we have short attention span, you have to keep on, you know, bringing back flame into the world. So how are you doing that for yourself? Is it super important that we do this? Yes. As a brand strategist, I do it all the time. I have fun because I'm, I'm lucky to work with brands that I really love. And they always have some fantastic ideas. And being part of that journey with them makes me makes, make it so exciting. And I really love it. And the reason why I'm doing this really nice, really want you to feel like you are part of that journey with you. And you can implement some of the things that I share and I do with my clients within your business as well. So let's look at the journey. Because the thing when you do look at Beyond Magic, they're like, listen, I'm at the start of my business. So I'm at a point where... We don't think about going, we go after it's like night. We don't have that kind of budget. And I say, you know what? I understand. I, understand. I completely understand. And I'm going to show you how you can do it face by face as you grow your business or even it, or you can even split your activities around different elements of a beyond marketing approach. So basically when your customer, you haven't built a relationship with your customer yet, really think about it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like the example of a relationship you know if you always you know if you give say hey i'm this i'm that you know you talk about yourself and you're not providing enough value people will just disconnect so always think about how much value you can provide if you even think about you know when you want to get a good i would say if, if i'm a personal trainer first thing i would do i'll create a lot of videos a lot of great tips people can take but at the end of the day people can learn themselves people who are really committed to results will actually hire them and say hey i want to do this so really what you want to do is to build awareness remember you build that's within this brand strategy phase where you are where you're trying to really articulate what makes you unique that's when you also build you know you also build what people should choose you what makes you remarkable but the same to say i'm remarkable because of that but also let me give you lots of great value because i know you're going to benefit from that yes this is where you educate very important you educate educate especially when people are not familiar with your brand or familiar with the type of services that you do you know i work a lot with technology companies and that's what i always tell them you focus on the education piece because you are asking people to change their habit and by nature we are creative habit and we don't like change so don't go too fast take it easy okay 
when you have secured that client and say, okay, now I've decided to buy from you, you need to go further than that. You need to say, okay, now, not only I'm going to do a great job, but I'm going to go beyond and provide you great services. You know, so say, for example, I'll give you an example. So say, hey, I was supposed to give you a strategy or give you a strategy in three weeks, and then you do it in two and a half weeks. Yes, they say, but like, you know, great services, great customer service, great quality. You really care about the success. You really care about delivering a great result for them. Then that's magical. Then when you have that, your great customer is happy with your service, is how you keep them involved in your journey, how you really tell them, tell people about their stories, you know, involve them in, in being part of your brand. I think nowadays people really underestimate the power of um, micro-influencers, you know, whatever it is in B2B or B2C, you don't have to go to the Kim Kardashian, to be honest, I wouldn't go there. I will go for the small ones I really believe in, buy into my brand and really put them forward and really say, hey, we want you this month to represent us because we're really part about what you do. And then we see people here, people who have much more trust in the hip of somebody that is your customer when it, when it comes from your own mouth. So again, reward and recognition is part as well of your journey. Again, that is why you really build that community and that is why you transform your customers into advocate. But remember, as anything in life, you know, everything goes into phases. So awareness and understanding, provide value, commitment, deliver service. Because if you don't actually do great, great service delivery, then you're wasting your wasting your best time and your time. And then advocacy and the community make them people that will be proud of staying with you forever. So you look at it this, look at it this way. The first phase is a creative discovery, then you have great customer access excellence, as I mentioned before, and partnership and innovation. I'm gonna show you some example in a minute so it makes more sense. I hope it makes sense for everybody. Give me a like, give me a yes. It makes sense by this. Yes, I'm here in the box. I'm gonna be chatting with you. Launch, obviously, when you launch a new business, this is where you spend most of your time, you scale, and then you expand. As you see, as you get bigger, you will see that your, your focus on your bear marketing will evolve. You probably spend, if you like, like, spend more time in the burning phase, but if you are a smaller business and trying to scale, you can probably spend more time in delivering great quality services. So you really evaluate where your business is so you, so you can do something, you can provide, you can create, get the best return on investment for yourself, yes? So don't go think like a big company because first, not everybody has a big budget <laughs> and you really think about how well you are in your business and how you can really apply the different activities I've given you. All right. So I told you about this photo, so I hope it's going to make you think differently about everything that you do. Really think about how you can do. So in the case, if I was a hairdresser, you can do a partnership with um, a hotel. For example, we feel like we have the same type of customers as you. Let's do this event together every year. Then you bring cocktails, you bring like all sorts of brands around it. And that creates something that people want to remember. Remember what great brands do. They create experiences, stories that you will remember for your life. It's not so much about what you do, it's about the memories that you create. It's the same thing as, as individuals. Again, let me talk about the example of Nike before. Again, Nike, you know, done really great. Their app, you know, they didn't have, this is a great ecosystem they've done that because they could have just been selling trainers, but they've understood that the bigger, remember the ultimate goals of their customers as well was around, you know, building that, being the, you know, the, the inner, Athlete renew. Let us give you and challenge yourself. Like you share your track, you share your run route with everybody else. See how far you've gone, and then you, you have music in your ear and all of these things. It works. It works. Really, really works. Google obviously has done really, really well. You know, they started with just being a search engine and look at how far they've gone. Really understand. I'm serving businesses. Yes, and trust me. You know, obviously look at how the situation people were on the cloud. Have, have relentless have been people who have not had that have a struggle for COVID-19. When we moved into when we moved into isolation, my team was not at all affected because we always been I've always allowed my team to work from where they want, and therefore that didn't, did not affect, impact us at all. And it was great. We we're able to offer the great service that our clients expected. I love this. This is during COVID-19. Give me some example during COVID-19. This is pain box. And I love what they've done. They actually done, you know, they basically do nail, nail uh, polish. And then it created like a great Zoom call where women can, um, you know, women, in men as well, if you want to, <laughs> can really just do some tutorials. And it was a great way to stay connected. You know, it doesn't have to be big, but people obviously, everybody knows about Zoom now. I mean, a lot of people like us knew about Zoom for a long time, but people are new to Zoom, but it's a great way to stay connected and show your creation and do something fun with your brand. You know, you can just, again, you could just be selling nail polish, but they went further than that, and that's what makes a difference. Obviously, I'm not going to talk too much about Apple. We know they're great at this. But again, here, again, innovation may be part of your company culture to keep your customer engaged. Look at this bottle, Mark Jacobs with her cola. Great combination. You understand very clearly that supermodels don't drink don't, don't have sugar in the body. They want to say, you know, as slender as possible. So great combination is Coca-Cola Light. They could have chosen another brand, but they chose this one for a very big, very specific purpose. That really helps you understand 
you know, the ability to just innovating. If, if you can't bring innovation within your business, partner with other people to bring innovation externally. That's really going to keep you exciting. Again, I love this one. This was for Valentine's Day. It was Moonpink Car did a, did a collaboration with KFC. I thought it was very funny. People who don't really, uh, you know, probably against, you know, Valentine's and all sort of things like that. Really, really did that and make a lot of noise. And it was really great. And everyone, this was a negative uh, campaign uh, for uh, Burger King during the isolation time. And you can see what they've done here was really good. They showed that, well, you, you can't come to us, but we're going to give you exactly the step by step to get all the ingredients to get yourself, to make yourself an, your own Burger King burger. How cool is this? Again, a collaboration with Carrefour, a French supermarket, and Uber. Remember where you started. Yes? Because that's really what needs to stay in touch. You know, when you think about going beyond, remember where you started because your vision was the reason your customers were attracted to you. So you think about brands like Dove as well really showcased during COVID-19, the reason that no matter why, you're still beautiful. Yes? So the reason why is where Nike was really strong in terms of what they believed in terms of equality. And again, something that's why people choose to buy from Nike still, no matter what they, be, 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 they believe in. Okay? So I want to finish off of this and tell you that remember the good words as well of Innovation must be part of your company culture to keep your customer engaged. Remember that. It's super key. Super, super, super key. Remember the good words as well. I was going to be too soon. Huh? <laughs> Remember the good words of Carl Lagerfeld in a way you must always surprise. Yeah. So if you think when's the last time you surprised a customer doing something amazing and, you know, you had Father's Day, if you've done something for my Father's Day, calling your customers, your, your, your male customers and wish them happy Father's Day was a great way to just bring, build that bond you have with your audience, with your customers. All right. I hope you enjoyed my talk, but I didn't want to leave you there. I wanted to give you more value. So I've created, you know, during COVID-19, I realized that not everybody can work with me because of distance, obviously, or sometime in a different country. So I created my first brand coaching program. You can have access to that right now. So you just visit freecolorsworld.co.uk slash Flavilla. Take a screenshot if you want to. And I've also reserved a number of limited brand assessments. So be quick, get it before I say, you know, I'm going to take more people. And I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy my session. I really enjoy doing sharing this with you. And I hope that it's gonna revolutionize the way you do your business and get something, create a brand that people love and build a brand that people love and get you where you want to be. I'm really excited to do this with you. So thank you so much. You can find me on all social media platforms: Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, where I'm very, very mouthy. But you know what? That's me. I can't help it. Thank you so much for having me.